Hi, so this is Chris from Holy Retardation and this is my second face-to-face -face video with you guys since uh, I got some kind of a camera and uh, in this second video I want to explain to you how I am maniacal about ancient history and about ancient books and I mean fucking ancient books like books that are at least 1500 years old something of a kind uh, half my library if not even more than this uh, are old books that I have I mean ancient books uh, in Bulgarian uh, we have this uh, we had uh, this uh, this nice uh, publishing house in the 80s uh, called Hermes uh, you know named by the god Hermes uh, by the way, check this out. Uh, I'm using as a background my paintings again, and since I'm a history geek, uh, I'm also a Titanic geek. Uh, this is uh, one of my paintings, and it's actually unfinished, but I kind of like how it looks like when it's unfinished. It kind of has its, you know, unfinished mystery about it, like uh, the unfinished journey of the Titanic. It's, uh, this is how I see, you know, the, the symbolism of it. And this is actually the second, you know, painting of Titanic that I have. And it's, you know, the second one that's not finished. Because the first one is also not finished. I may show it to you sometime. But, uh, yeah, this is my painting of Titanic. And uh, I, I feel obligated to point out that uh, I'm not a fan of Titanic because of the fucking movie. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like the movie, I, I like the movie very much, I think it's a brilliant film, but uh, I prefer to say that I love Titanic because of its actual history and not because of, you know, James fucking Cameron, I don't give a fuck about, you know, uh, Jack and Rose and a fucking floating piece of wood, uh, I don't give a fuck about uh, all that, uh, I give a fuck about history because... The real history of Titanic is amazing and uh, I don't think that it needs, you know, some stupid fictional love story in order to, you know, make the people love it and remember it. Which is, uh, you know, sadly this is the case with most people around the globe. They know about Titanic because uh, they've seen Jack and Rose. Uh, but whatever, you know, people are general generally... Uh, idiots, which includes me, but uh, I for one like the history of Titanic because it's, because of its actual history and not because of 20th century Fox. Uh, oh yeah, so this is my, you know, my new kind of background. Uh, what I was saying, since I'm a history geek and I love ancient history, which, uh, you know, includes uh, uh, Greece and Rome, I am maniacal about ancient literature. Uh, Poems, uh, kind of like the Iliad and the Odyssey and all that crap, you know, the, the Enid, uh, by Virgil, uh, all of this, plus, you know, the ancient uh, novels that we have remaining, which is, I think, about, I think, two, now that I think of it, uh, and uh, even, you know, just plain documents, uh, some kind of scriptures, you know, just inscriptions on buildings, whatever. Every fucking ancient text that is preserved, I fucking love it, just because it's ancient. <laughs> you know, it's amazing how you can read something that is two, three thousand years old, because I think... Because this very piece of text preserved the mind and the thinking of an individual that lived thousands of years ago. I mean, this is partially why I don't like, I'm not so interested in, you know, more recent history in the, Rena the Renaissance and, you know, late medieval period. I don't care so much about this kind of history because I don't consider it so old. But ancient history, I think, is fucking amazing because it's so old, because you can still reach the mind of a person who died 2,000 years ago. And I was saying, uh, you know, before I got interrupted with my Titanic crap, 
I was saying how in Bulgaria uh, during the 80s they had this publishing house called Hermes that uh, uh, you know that put out all of these ancient texts and I got I, I think I got all the books I, I, I it's it's basically uh, all ancient literature just gathered up in the, in these little editions and it's uh, it's the novels it's the letters of the emperors preserved uh, it's the poems it's uh, every fucking ancient text you can think of I, I even have the fucking Bible because it's too ancient you know I'm a complete atheist I I don't respect religion I fucking hate it I think it's one of the most evil things in the world but I still have the Bible and I'm reading it and I value it as a piece of literature because this stupid fucking book is ancient and it influenced the world in such a I want to say catastrophic way but it's not exactly catastrophic it's more like it affected the world too much just way more than it should have affected it in the first place but what I'm saying is I love ancient history so much and ancient literature that I even have and read the Bible because it's you know the New Testament actually has uh, you could say historical sources because there's the letters of I don't know who the fuck was it Saint Paul or Saint Peter or whatever just some, just letters of these you know presumable saints to the Romans to the Greeks to, to whoever the fuck they wrote to uh, in order to explain to them the power and the word of God the power of the scriptures it's some kind of crap but it's actual letters from these persons to these people and to other persons which I think is still historically amazing so what I was saying once again I get interrupted you know by my own thoughts very often so yeah I'm just an amateur so whatever the fuck I talk about what I want to talk about these ancient books are what drives me nuts these days uh, and I got many actually you know it's a whole fucking pile uh, half my library just ancient texts and uh, the camera that I'm recording with right now uh, you know is leaning against uh, my copy of the decline and fall of the roman empire by edward gibbon it's not exactly ancient but it concerns you know ancient times so what i want to talk about today uh this will be <laughs> because i talk about lots of shit uh, without even realizing it in this specific video I want to review an ancient text, an ancient source, an ancient book, if you want to call it a book. Uh, give me a sec. Uh, uh, it's Julian, about Julian Apostate, you know, Julian the, the heretic, uh, Julian, uh, uh, who was... Uh, Jesus fucking Christ, where's my fucking book? There we fucking go. That's the one that I uh, finished reading, like, uh, I think two days ago, I don't remember anymore. But uh, this is a little edition, uh, including the most, you know, not all of the letters of Julian, but most of them, and I think the ones who are, you know, most important historically. Uh, so, uh, first of all, who is Julian? Who is Emperor Julian? Uh, I talked about him a little in my previous video. Uh, he is a 4th century AD Roman Emperor who lived on the border of uh, the old religion, which is the pagan religion, the Roman and the Greek gods, and Christianity. He lived exactly when these two clashed and exactly when the new world order which was christianity took over paganism you know all the roman slash greek gods uh jupiter uh zeus apollo uh, all of these you know beautiful greek greco-roman gods just you know they were all abolished and in their place came jesus christ and all the saints and all the other you know 
retarded fuckers with their stupid scriptures. Uh, whatever. Uh, so he lived on the verge of these two worlds because I literally consider this uh, as a change of worlds. He lived in very turbulent times. He lived in a time of civil wars, of uh, religious, you know, fanatics running around the place. He lived. Uh, if we gotta talk about martyrs of philosophy, martyrs of the ancient world, and you know, in contrast with the typical martyrs that we hear of from Christianity, if we wanna discuss two martyrs of philosophy and uh, Greco-Roman times, that would be Julian on the one hand and uh, Hypatia, the philosopher who was. Uh, a 4th century AD philosopher in Alexandria, she was one of the last, you know, true philosophers of the ancient world. She was a mathematician, an astronomer. She was just, you know, a very intelligent fucking person and a woman, which uh, Christianity in Christianity you cannot have a, a combination of these two. <laughs> so, you yeah. know, so uh, Hypatia and Julian, both of them were philosophers. Both of them were, you know, intelligent. Both of them tried to hold back, you know, the madness that was Christianity. You know, that would be more Julian than Hypatia, because Hypatia was... She didn't precisely fight Christianity, she, was, she just refused to be baptized or whatever it was called, uh, to accept Christianity. They both died. They were both killed because of their beliefs, they were both killed because they did not obey the scripture and the word of God. They refused to turn into uh, zealots. And uh, But I could talk about Hypatia in a separate video, uh, because her story is a little bit more different and there's a lot to talk about her. Uh, I could make a review of uh, Agra, which is a 2009 uh, movie uh, portraying the story of Hypatia and uh, as Hypatia stars uh, the beautiful Rachel Weisz. Uh, it's an amazing movie which deserves its own review, which deserves its own inspiring speech. It's just amazing and uh, yeah, I'm probably gonna be doing a separate video about it. Uh, this video is about our other martyr of philosophy, which is uh, Julian. So he was a 4th century AD emperor who tried to fight back Christianity. He was a philosopher in the literal literal sense of the word. He, he had a beard, <laughs> you know, like a true philosopher. Uh, he, he was one of those deliciously peculiar characters in regards to their, you know, hypocrisy. Because the difference between him and Hypatia was that Hypatia tried to, you know, to resist Christianity without uh, imposing her own views on the world, the views of philosophy and, uh, you know, Neoplatonism, which was her kind of spiritual religion, while Julian, on the other hand, not only tried to fight back Christianity, you know, to resist it, but like a true Roman and like a true emperor, like a true ruler of the Roman world, he tried to stifle it, he tried to impose back the old religion, he not exactly chased after Christians, but he punished them for the crap that, that they did, he tried to restore the ancient temples, which about two or three generations ago uh, had been turned into, you know, churches, converted into churches. He tried to restore the old temples, he tried to legally restore the gods, to bring back a tradition of, you know, animal sacrifices, because that was, uh, that, that, that is something strictly forbidden by Christianity 
and uh, you can uh, while you read there's this amazing book I'm gonna make a comparison uh, in this video between his actual letters that have been preserved and this wonderful fucking novel that is probably one uh, one of the best novels ever written in my opinion uh, by uh, Gore Vidal Julian and I fucking love my dust cover it's uh, you know this is him this is a coin of Julian the Apostate uh, it's a historical, a historical fiction novel by Gore Vidal and, and it's, it deals with precisely his story through the eyes of you know his own journal and uh, the eyes of two more uh, Greek philosophers uh, that are just such you know such amazing characters such an amusing pair to behold in comparison to Julian especially uh, so I got lost again uh, he tried Julian tried to fight back Christianity the aggressive kind of way he not only, for example, tried to convert back churches into temples, he tried to restore literally all the ancient traditions of sacrifices of animals, which you, th you think that he'd do it, you know, kind of the mild way, not just overdoing it, but he fucking overdid it. Uh, when he tried to restore the tradition of sacrifices and he started doing sacri making sacrifices he slew like i don't know at a single sacrifice he slew something of i don't know i think something like 600 bulls can you imagine the amount of animals the amount of meat the amount of animal lives that were being spent just for his stupid sacrifices. I mean, I'm all for philosophy and, you know, paganism and for religious tolerance. I'm all for that. But Julian goes through the other end of the stake, you know, complete polar opposites, aggressive Christianity and aggressive paganism. How can you slay 600 animals for just one sacrifice? I mean, not only the lives of these animals, but how much time does it take you to actually slay so much fucking bulls? I can't even imagine the herd that he would, you know, line up in order to be slain just for his stupid ritual. <laughs> I'm getting, you know, blown up by the wind again. What I'm saying is... Julian tried to fight back Christianity aggressively, and that is what took him down eventually. He just overdid it. Although Hypatia didn't do anything of the sort, and she still died. But yeah, it's whatever. They're just, they're just amazing characters. Uh, and let me get back to this again. This is a little addition uh, that uh, consists of uh, his letters, uh, which are... Curiously enough, you know, I love how in this little book all of these letters are Julian's But there are three sections of letters and uh, the first one is, you know, authentic letters That are proven to be really his and the others are like uh, Letters that aren't necessarily authentic and like what the fuck? If they are not proven to be, you know, like 100% authentic, why would you even, I don't know, I guess there's a theory, I guess there's a chance, you can always, uh, you can always make the choice for yourself to say whether these letters are indeed his or aren't, I guess that's the, the juicy battles that historians, you know, embark on uh, between each other. And, uh, and then the third section is... Uh, Letters that, uh, that are a hundred percent not his. <laughs> Letters that are, that are proven to be, you know, written by someone else's hand. Why would you even include these? I mean, isn't it weird how even the letters that are proven to be uh, written by someone else are included in this book just because 
they were originally considered to be Julian's letters. And I, it's not that I'm complaining. I want to have even those, even the fake letters I want to have. Uh, it's just interesting how they combine everything into one for you to enjoy. The fake and the real, because after all, it's so ancient. I mean, one of these letters that were uh, in here in the book uh, that was... Uh, proven to be not his, you know, certainly not his, is even older. In the notes it explains uh, how this letter can be, you know, written by Julian because it's actually proven to have been written like three centuries earlier, which is like, you know, close to the time of Augustus and Caesar. And like, the letter may be fake, but that's even more awesome because a letter from the time of, of Augustus and, and Caesar and Cicero is just amazing. So uh, I don't mind uh, if they include the fake letters because even the fake ones are ancient and even the fake ones, you know, drive me nuts. So what I was saying about this book that I want to make a review, you know, it, it's a compilation of his letters. Uh, and it has its value as a historical source. It, I couldn't say that you can get much of his personality from these letters because they're so official, they're so formal and so, you know, pompously written. I want to compare this, which is the real letters of Julian, with this, which is the novel by Gore Vidal. It's basically of us, they're basically of the same nature. Because this is like, you know, his memoirs, his, his diaries, and this is his letters, which is kind of the same way of writing. They're both from the first person, they both, you know, speak with his voice. And the first of these two that I read was this one, which is the fictional, the historical fiction one. And uh, I fell in love with the character, I fell in love with his voice, with his way of thinking, with his way of you know, sweet, bittersweet controversy. I just fell in love with him and the book. And then I read this. After I read the historical fiction, I read the, you know, the actual historical sources on which actually this book is based. And I found a different Julian. The presumably real Julian from these letters is actually not the same. You know, in the historical fiction, you know, I like to say that historical fiction uh, is not so, you know, romanticized, is not so black and white, is not, too, is not so mainstream and likable to the audience. But it kind of is. If you read historical fiction and then, the re and then read the actual historical source, there's a difference. There's a fucking difference. I don't want to say that this book is, you know, romanticized because it's not. It's fucking realistic. It's amazing. It's harsh. It's brutal, but the voice of this Julian is much milder and much, you know, likable than the voice of the real Julian. And I quote again, presumably real quote. It's not a quote, it's whatever the fuck. <laughs> I mean that like, historical fiction is milder and better than the real historical source. And not, you know, I wouldn't say better, I would say better sounding, which means that the real historical source, uh, even if it's harsher, even if it's, you know, not so likable, it's still better than historical fiction, and it's just letters, this is, this is a whole fucking story, this is, uh, you know, a complete body of text with a beginning and an ending, and everything that you want in a, in a complete novel. And this is just a pile of fucking letters. It doesn't have a story, it uh, doesn't have, you know, any continuity, it doesn't have uh, almost anything, you know, uh, structural about it. It's very chaotic, it's very unorganized and, you know, confusing. And it's still better than the fictional novel because it's still more authentic and it's still harsher and it's still more realistic and you meet your favorite character which is my julian the love of my the ancient love of my life <laughs> julian i see him here and i fall in love with him and then i see him here 
and he's a fucking asshole. The real historical source is even harsher. It's even more, you know, it's merciless. It doesn't have any mercy on your soul as a reader and as a history geek and as a good person because that's what history does to good people. Uh, I'm a very good person, but when you read history, it makes you, you know, it kills your emotions, it drives you nuts, it makes you think, you know, very cold-heartedly, cold-bloodedly. <laughs> Uh, that's what I love about history, it, it, it can drive you fucking nuts. So my review of Julian's letters, specifically, they're amazing. I love reading such, you know, it's not a story, it's not structural, it's not coherent, it's nothing, it's just fucking letters. And you still love it more than a, you know, than a fictional novel. Because you know that it's real, presumably. You get a glimpse of the real soul of Julian, which you still get through this one, but you you know you know that it's fictional and it always kills you know most of the love you have for it. Just the knowledge that it's not that it, that it's fictional. So yeah, Julian's letters, an ancient text, texts, if we gotta be you know correct, they're awesome. They're amazing. If you want to look into this era of religious turbulence, of these terrible fucking civil wars and these ridiculous, you know, fights between bishops and between priests about the nature of God, I mean, it's fucking ridiculous. If you want to look into the era of this, what will strike you the most is the fucking stupidity that Christianity, uh, you know, storms into, the way it stumps into everything that is rational. All the Greek philosophers, you know, Plato and Aristotle, all of them, they just get crushed under all these religious fights about, for example, whether the nature of uh, God is, you know, dual or triple or whatever the fuck, you know, quadruple about the Holy Trinity, whether the nature of the Son is the same as the nature of the Father. Or the nature of the Holy Spirit is the same as the nature of Jesus. And it's just fucking crap. Especially if a person like me, uh, who is, you know, a complete fucking atheist, a person like me comes into this, uh, this kind of, you know, fights. It makes me wonder, how can people be so fucking stupid? We went to ancient time. We went through ancient times, through medieval times, through the Renaissance, into the modern era, and we still fight about this crap. We still fight like these bishops from the fourth century A.D. about the nature of the gods, about who we should follow, about who we should worship, and about what sins we have, you know what sins we have and uh, in what kind of hell we will burn if we don't repent. Uh, it's just complete fucking crap and nothing has changed for 1500 years. But the fact that uh, from these bishop fights from the 4th century AD, the fact that from these fights have passed all these years, and that it's official history, it, it makes it interesting to me, you know. It makes it amazing to me to read about these fights and these stories and these people that get mashed up into this religious uh, psychopathic chaos of civilization. Just because it's old, I like it. And I like reading about it. And if you want to peek into this window of human stupidity and drama, essentially, you can read stuff like the letters of Julian, because he is amazing, uh, and uh, the world he lived into, he lived in, is just something that still happens today. And if you read about, you know, the ancient version of it, you can then kind of realize that we're in the same shit nowadays, and hopefully this way we will be 
faster with trying to resolve it effectually.